This is taper bearings for your mini lathe. So my lathe has been modified considerably so you're going to see uh, some of the uh, mods here. And most likely this won't look exactly like your lathe. So we're going to start off by removing the headstock here and then the gear train for the drive screw. This video is mainly going to be the how to do it not the why to. I'm going to leave a bunch of links down below. Um, T2H Instructable, some of the other friends I know and they'll explain why you need to do this modification. Here's a look at the custom control panel with the DRO. So we'll get the drive belt off here and we're going to get this plastic gear here, remove the C-clip and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll remove this, uh, this plastic gear, drive gear here. Uh, there is a key underneath here and I'll point it out. Uh, just make sure not to lose it. Pay close attention to where it's at. It, a lot of times they pop off when you take them out. So let's move on to removing the two nuts that are uh, compressed together with friction on the main shaft here. Uh, this is just how I did it. If you have the right tools, you may be able to use the right tools or you might have to come up with your own tools to do it. Whoops, there's another one of those keys you got to make sure not to lose. So we're going to go ahead and remove this large plastic spacer, then we're going to go over and remove the control panel and you get to see some of the goodies inside. If you've watched my previous series, you know what's in here. I'll point out a few items. I've got a, a voltage converter here, the D-Rock, the LM2596. I'll leave a link below. So I'll pull the cover here to expose the motor on the lathe. This is a, a, a design of my own and plus one I found on the web. If you watch my previous videos, you'll see it. I'll link again in the bottom. Uh, it's a 2250 watt uh, outrigger motor. I'm going to go ahead and pull the screws and remove the headstock now. On this disassembly sequence, it's just how it worked out for me. Uh, you can obviously do it any way you like. I've got sometimes I'm taking the wrong part off first, but you can do it the way you like. Go ahead and pull the C clip on the front and then go ahead and get your punch out and punch out the intermediate shaft. So I didn't lose the key on the shaft, I went ahead and reinstalled the gear on the shaft in the direction uh, that it originally came. So I'm not going to tighten the vise, I'm just using the vise to hold the headstock here. And I got a block of wood and I'm going to go ahead and pound the bearing now. So it took me a couple steps to get the bearing totally off here. I'm taking the spacer off and I'm taking the key out. I'm going to go back over to the vise here. I've got these blocks and I'm going to go ahead and put them underneath the edge of the bearing and go ahead and pound it down. A few more taps and we'll bring the shaft down some more and then I had to bring it back to the vise and tap on a little bit more but I finally get it out. Alright, one final tap to get it off the shaft. Let's go over to the bench and we can complete the disassembly. Now let's replace those rattle fit bearings with some nice taper bearings. Uh, these can be bought for $7 on Amazon, I'm not kidding. Uh, I so long did not do this project because of the price of the bearings and then when I found them on Amazon for 7 bucks, I nearly kicked myself. Now the bearing that you need is this 30206 tapered roller bearing. You can google that on Amazon or whatever and you'll find the bearing. I, again, I'll put a link below to the Amazon, the $7. That's per bearing, so it'll be $14 uh, for both of these bearings. So as you just seen, I'd use some PVC pipe uh, to go ahead and pound the bearing uh, in place here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, grease this up real well, and then I'll go ahead and put the outside part of the bearing on there. Um, and now we're going to uh, put it in the headstock. Notice I'm pulling this second uh, spacer out, that plastic spacer, and then there's the large drive gear. Again, pay attention to the orientation. Here, 
I'm taking out the other bearing again with that same piece of PVC plastic just knocked it out of the bag it came out really easy so I'm using this piece of brass here to uh, drive this uh, outside bearing ring uh, inside the case it was pretty snug fit we're gonna go ahead and, and grease these and now we can go ahead and reassemble the front part uh, don't forget to put your gear in and make sure you got your orientation right we got our spacer on there and there's a brass spacer as well I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail here in just a bit um, so we'll get that fit So on the second outer race, I decided to go ahead and go a little bit different. I used a block of wood to go ahead and put the other race in. Now that that's secure, it's time to go ahead and lube up the other bearing and uh, install that as well. Uh, I decided to use the locking nuts um, and the spacer to, to drive the bearing in. Uh, I know this next step could have been better, but this is just how I happen to do it. I take the headstock and the backing plate, I go ahead and put that in the vise so it doesn't swing around and I got it crooked and I don't have it tight. But anyway, I'm using this. If you watch, you can see the bearing come down into the outside race, or inside race. And so I ran out of thread, I had to go ahead and put the gear back on so I could get that all the way down and get those bearings down tight and close. I left a little bit of this uh, spinning stuff in because it's like so cool, but believe me, I had to edit a bunch of it out. Um, anyways, we're going to go ahead and take this back apart. It's time to start to reassemble the, the back end here. Here's another shot of those taper bearings in action. With all this moving around, I really scratched my uh, headstock up a lot. So I sanded it really light, and here's another coat of paint. And so while we're waiting for the paint to dry, let's have some delicious fruit punch. Of course, if you all watch my videos, you know this is a gift from the mini machine shop, Dave M. Thank you, Dave. Cheers, buddy. Now let's get back to work take this tape off from the uh, paint job here and I did get some paint on the shaft behind there later on I'll show you how I get that paint off here we're gonna install the high-low gear selector um, and it's got a uh, like a BB all ball bearing with a spring and a screw so you can adjust the tightness um, and this why you got it off this is it's time to get it right Now we're going to install the intermediate shaft with the intermediate gear for the high-low selector here. Um, you got to line that keyway up with the plastic key in the gear there. And we're going to use the punch again here to fully seat the bearing in the back and the front side of the headstock. And to get the other bearing installed, I'm just going to use this uh, pipe fitting that's a reducer and we'll just uh, push that bearing all the way down. Quick test the gears, make sure nothing binds and everything moves smoothly. And then we'll go ahead and install the yoke and the gear selector. Um, the way that I do this is you assemble it, you push the, uh, the handle all the way until it's flat and then it will just roll over and then you can push the shaft back in, this, in the hole there and then tighten the screw. Now it's time to secure the headstock back to the bed. Uh, my lathe has adjustment screws already set and I didn't move them so there's not really a whole lot of alignment here to do. So now we'll go ahead and reinstall the control panel here and then uh, after the control panel is installed we'll go ahead and reinstall the motor and connect the belt up. Now we're going to go over and pull the, uh, the power pulley, install that back on and uh, here's you got to put that key back in and uh, don't drop it. Get the key in there. 
put the gear on. And then you just easily put that uh, C clip back on. Real simple, right? That would be a take 50, I guess. One thing you don't want to do is forget to put the bearing cover on before you put the gear. But luckily, it will fit in there even if you do. Now we're going to reinstall the custom brushless motor here and with the mounting screws that I've got, these are all stainless. Uh, check out my other videos, I'll link below and show you how this mount works. Let's go ahead and test it out. Let's do a quick motor test now. Here you can see the DRO showing volts and amps. I don't have the tack hooked up right now. Here I'm going to tighten the bearings up again, installing the spacer and the gear, and uh, go ahead and get this tight for the final fitting. Previously I mentioned the paint. Here's how I got the paint off. I folded up some sandpaper and just ran the motor. Now let's go ahead and reinstall that headstock. Yeah, you know, installation is the reverse of removal. Oh, well hello Larry. How are you doing today? And so let's go around to the back of the lathe now and uh, let's take a look. We're going to go ahead and put the uh, plastic bushing on, the key stock in, the gear, and the two friction nuts on. And to keep the head stock from spinning, I just took a pair of pliers and tightened them up in the chuck there and that gave me the capability to tighten it. Now let's button this baby up. As you notice, the gears just magically appear. You don't have to put those back on. And we'll put it back on the bench and we'll conclude this video. We'll do some uh, closing shots here of running, uh, running the lay, the new bearings. It's definitely quieter. Um, and I know I'm going to get a lot better cuts now. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. If you like my videos, remember, thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends.